Hi everybody, it's Jen behind the camera again. Just where I'm supposed to be. Um, we're going to show you a technique that will save your soul if you have gotten home from a trip to the fabric store and you are short some backing fabric. Now, let's imagine, right, that we have gotten a three yard bundle at Calico Mermaid. So, our three yard bundle patterns tend to be around the um, like 47 to 50 inches wide and approximately 52 to 58 or 60 inches long, right? And the standard that they tell you to get is three yards of backing. Well, what if you have the perfect backing for your quilt, but you only have two yards of it? Or what if you get to Calico Mermaid and you find one of the fabrics that is in your three yard bundle, but there are only two yards left or two and a quarter yards? Are you bummed out because you can't get those two yards? No, you can make them work. Now, it will be a little bit tricky and you will be working with bias edges. So you might not want to, but if that perfect back is not quite enough, you can still make it work. So this is how we're going to make these dimensions work with two yards only. So let's put that paper out of the way and bring in our yardage. Wow, this came right off the bolt. No, it's um, it's a four to one um, reduction in size. So this is actually um, <clears throat> the length of two yards, right? So there's a yard and here's another yard. And if we opened it up, it would be a pretend 44, 45 inches wide. Okay, so here are our two yards of fabric. If we cut them in half like this, right? And sewed them together the other way. It would be this and another one. It would be nice and long, but it would not be wide enough for your fabric, for the back of your quilt. You would not have enough to, you have 36, 36 inches wide and that's definitely not enough to cover a 48 inch wide quilt. And if you tried to do it this way, you would only have 44 inches wide and you would only have, um, and you would have 72 inches long, which would be way more than enough for the lengthwise, but it would not be enough widthwise. Okay. So here's how you can get away with this piece of fabric. Now, if you want to calculate this yourself, there is an online calculator and it is at the Ginny Buyer website, okay? J-I-N-N-Y-B-E-Y-E-R. Or you can Google diagonal pieced back. And it will take you to that site where you can fill out the, the calculator to see if you have enough fabric. So what you'll want to do is you will want to have the measurement of your fabric that you want to put on the back. You want to have your dimensions of your quilt. And what you're going to do is there's going to be this color coded form on the website and you will put in those dimensions how they want. They want like the width of your quilt back plus an inch and they want the length of your quilt back and how much fabric that you have. And you're going to keep plugging them in and follow. There's going to be arrows pointing from one box to another. You're just going to put that amount in the next box. And you're going to keep going until you find out how many yards you need. And then you will find out if you have enough. But here is how the technique works. Because there really aren't, aren't a whole lot of good um, video tutorials on how to do this. 
So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lay out your fabric, whether it's on the floor or on a couple of tables. Um, obviously, it's not going to be this little, so it'll be way easier to do it with a big piece of fabric on like a big dining table or a couple of tables put together or the floor. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the corners. Do you see how when you pull it, it tells you where it's going, where the middle is from corner to corner? And you're going to fold it along that. Okay, and you can do it either um, right sides together or, le or wrong sides together. <laughs> either way. And when you do that, it's going from point to point, it's going to look like this. And you're going to have this overlap, and that's good. That's what you want. Okay? And you're going to take scissors, or you're going to take your rotary cutter. I will tell you in advance that you don't need to have an exact, an exactly straight cut. And it is very hard to get your rotary cutter um, on top of this when you're spanning like three tables <laughs> worth of um, space. So scissors will work just fine. Besides, quilters never use their scissors anymore, right? We need to give them a nice workout. So we are going to go underneath or in between here. And we are going to cut that diagonal, okay? Take your time. We're not in a hurry. There. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I have a little bit left over. And then we're going to put them back like this. Okay? Now, I'm going to put them like this sideways so it fits on our screen better. This is how we're going to make them. Uh, right now, we have um, our width here and our length here. We're going to slide them like this. No, like this. Okay. So do you see how this little point comes out here and this little point comes out here? We're going to slide and slide and slide. And you can see it's getting more and more like a square. It's getting wider the more we pull them apart from each other. Okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to have this nice long piece of fabric. And you're going to measure, see how much you have. And you're going to want to add an inch to whatever you need because you're going to be sewing them together, right? And you're going to pull them, slide them along each, along the edges. You're going to slide, slide, slide until you get that dimension plus an inch. So let's say your quilt is uh, 46 inches wide and you don't need any overage for the quilter. You're going to do it yourself on your home machine. So you need just enough to sort of overlap a little bit. So let's say you need 47 inches. Your quilt is 46 inches wide and you need 47 inches. So you're going to add another inch to that for your seam allowance. So you want this to measure 48 inches wide. So you just pull, pull, pull until you've got your 48 inches wide and you can see my overlap right there. Okay. And once you get to that point, you are going to pin them where they stop. Okay. I'm going to flip them over like this. That's how it's going to look. It's going to look, actually, that looks pretty neat. Um, you're going to pin all along here. And I hate pins. So you know how necessary this is if I'm pinning because I will invariably hurt myself a lot. I have 
bled in every single quilt I have ever made from pins. And so I joke that that's how they will, I, I don't have to put a label on my quilt because all they'll have to do is do a DNA analysis and they'll find out who did it. So real quick, I'm going to sew along this seam. You can do your standard um, quarter inch, but in this case, I tend to do a little bit of a generous seam. It does not have to be um, exactly a quarter of an inch. I don't want to go all the way to a half an inch, but um, it's good to have that available. And so I'm just going to sew this together real quick, and we will open it up and see what happens. So I've sewn the seam. We're going to take out my pins. See? Stabbed myself. Ouch. Dang it. Oh, blood. Sorry. Here we go, DNA. Now you're in that piece. Oh my gosh, who did this? Oh, it was Jennifer, I can tell. When our kids are older, we'll just have like phone apps with our uh, DNA readers in it. So when we're done, doo -doo -doo, and now we have this, um, we have this diagonally seamed back. What do you think? It, I actually pulled it this way originally. So now it is um, shorter and wider than it was before. Um, and you're only going to lose these little tails. I need to press it first, but you know, pretend I did. You're only going to lose these little tails when you put it together like this. So out of all out of all of that, we only have this much waste. I love that. And we have a backing that is now wide enough to go over your three yard quilt, your three yard bundle quilt. Um, so about, um, there's, there's, there's a lot of complex math behind here. And I, I want to be able to explain that to you, but I can't because really I don't understand it as well as I should. So what I suggest is go to the Ginny Buyer website. Here it is again. Um, you can Google Ginny Buyer. You can Google diagonal pieced back or diagonally pieced back. I would tell you the website exactly, except um, I'm filming this on my phone. So I can't look it up. But um, make sure you spell it this way. It's not Jenny and it's not Ginny with a G. And it's B-E-Y-E-R. And it'll give you an overview at the front of um, basically what you can expect for how much yardage will cover what size back quilt. Um, it is almost, a two yard chunk is almost perfect to make a three yard quilt. Uh, it just depends on your finished dimensions. Um, your three yard quilts almost never end up under 44 inches, which is your standard width of fabric. So you can't just stick a piece of fabric on the back. Um, so two or two and a half yards of fabric, even if you're a little short of this three yard target right here, that's listed on the back of the pattern, you're still going to have enough to back your quilt. Just plug in your dimensions at the Ginny Buyer website and make sure first, because I will be honest, bias edges suck. Bias seams are terrible. They are very fiddly. Um, this is a technique to use when you absolutely have to use this one fabric, but you just don't have quite enough. Um, it is a pain to lay it out because it is, it's, it's a really long uh, piece of fabric when you have like three yards of fabric, but you need um, a certain size for a back and it'll work, but, um, but, but it's just taking up such a long, 
um, width of t length of table. Um, it's fiddly. It's easier to do with two people if you have a partner to work with. Um, definitely use scissors instead of rotary cutters because you're almost never going to have enough mats to cut without having to move them. And if you have to move them, it's going to be a pain and it's not going to work out as well. So use your scissors on this. Use the ones that have a padlock here so that your kids don't use them or your husband doesn't use them to cut like uh, uh, tags off clothes and, and stuff like that. Um, so if you have a piece of fabric that you absolutely love and need to use on the back of a quilt, this is your technique. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment underneath. Um, I'm obviously... Uh, not here all the time because I'm taking shifts during the retreat. But um, this could be at night and I will definitely be checking in. And if you tag me or like put my name in it, um, then I'll get a notice and I'll say, hey, what's going on over in the retreat? And they'll, I'll see your question. So you can leave me a note anytime you like. I hope you liked this little sort of tutorial. Um, I hope it's useful for you. I know that I have used this several times um, putting together baby quilts because they never seem to end up smaller than 45, 44 inches, um, but I never seem to have enough back, uh, backing fabric for them. Like I'll get um, uh, the firefighter quilt that I made for my friend Wendy um, for her son and her son's first baby. Um, I put those fire dogs on the back. We actually have them in stock at the moment, but back then we only had like two and a quarter yards of it and I needed the entire thing for the back. And I used this, this uh, technique for that and it turned out perfect. Um, so anyway, that's it. It's pretty simple. It's just fiddly because of the bias edges. Don't be too afraid of it. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect because the good... The good thing about bias edges is that they stretch and so you can sort of iron it flat. <laughs> and then when you take it to your quilter or you quilt it yourself, you'll quilt it flat. So you won't notice that it's um, a little stretched in one direction or another. And you won't notice that your edges aren't completely clean because you cut them with scissors instead of a rotary cutter. So yeah, that's it. Like I said, leave me any questions underneath, and I hope you're having a fantastic retreat. Um, happy birthday. Happy hour birthday to you. And um, I would love to see if you ever try this technique on something that you've done. Um, I would love it if you texted the shop and showed me how it went or just, you know, said, hey, Jen, call the shop and say, hey, Jen, I tried that technique and it worked like magic and I only... Stuck myself with a pin three times. Woo, yay. Let's stop while we're ahead. Anyway, night everybody. You have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of your retreat. Bye-bye. See you later. Here, look, there's my signature bye-bye. Uh, see you later. <laughs>